In Creole Parametric, you can create rounds that have a variable radius. Here I have a part model. It's got a bunch of surface geometry in here that I'm using as a top cover to some consumer electronics. And I want to put a round on this edge. To do that, I can select the edge and then use the round tool. In the mini toolbar, you can see that the keyboard shortcut for the round feature is the letter R. I'll click on it. Here you can see a preview of the geometry that's being created. Let's change this to a value of 10. And when I take a look at this, I say, you know what? That constant value all the way around there, I don't like that. I want to have multiple different radius values. In order to make this a variable radius round, there are a couple of different ways to do that. If you go to the Sets tab, here we have the radius table down at the bottom. You can right click in here and choose Add Radius. Also, in the Graphics area, you can hold down the right mouse button. And in the Mini Toolbar, we have a command for Make Variable. If you're doing this in an earlier version of Creole Parametric, you'll see the words Make Variable. I will click on that. Now I get an additional drag handle that I can use to control this. And the drag handle is located on the same reference that I created the initial round. If we take a look at the radius table, we can see that we have these different radius values in here. And you can change the values either by double clicking on the number, you can change that to a value of 15. Also, you have drag handles that you can use to control that size. And it's going to interpolate between the different radius drag handles. Also, you can change the location of the drag handles. I can grab this one and I'm dragging it along the edge that it's located. And same with the other one. You'll notice that there are some numbers on here. Right now, when I let go of it, it's at a value of 0.3. This one is a value of 0.8. Right now, it is locating the radius drag handles using a method called length ratio. It takes that edge and normalizes it between zero at one end and one at the other. So for example, if I change this from 0.3 to 0.1, it's going to be located 10% along that edge. If I change this 0.8 to say 0.75, it'll be located three quarters of the way along the edge. But let's say I want this located on a different edge instead. If I hold down the right mouse button, I can change to location reference. And I can say I want it on this tangent edge instead. And here is my length ratio. Right now it's a value of 0.58 and some change. I can change that to 0.5 to put it right in the middle. And to change the dimensional value, let's change this down to a value of 20. So that is good for that one. Let's change this also to a value of 0.5. I just like it to be there in the middle. And let's take a look at creating some more radius handles. To do that again, you can right click in the radius table on the sets tab and you can choose add radius. Also, you can right click right on the location dragger and choose add radius. And like before, I can rotate this and then hold down the right mouse button and choose location reference and grab this other edge and choose a value for the length ratio and a value for the radius. And what it's going to end up doing is interpolating between those different values along the edge. So this is good so far. And I want to show you, in addition to defining the radius values by a numerical value and defining the locations by this length ratio, you can also use references to locate them. I'm going to turn on my datum point visibility. I already have some datum points that I created in this model. And some of these points were created at the intersection of some datum planes and the original edge in the model. Let's say I want this to be located on one of those datum points. I can grab this and as I'm dragging it along the edge, if I hold down the shift key, I can snap into that datum point and it automatically changes it to use the reference method. The other way, I'm going to take a look at the other one with the radius of 20 on the other side. 
I can change, I can select it in the table over here, the same line, and then change this from ratio to reference, and then pick this datum point over here, and it adjusts the location of the radius handle to that particular datum point in here. Let's take a look at adding in a couple of other different datum points. I'll right click on there and choose add radius. And again, as I'm dragging this, I can hold down the shift key and highlight the datum point and let it snap to it. And that's good. Let me change this. I'll change them later on. Let's go to the other side. One thing that I like to do, especially with these, let me add radius, uh, is if I want to have a relatively constant value between two locations, I'll create drag handles there and then change the values in between them. Be aware that that doesn't always work because again, it's interpolating between the values along the entire lengths of the references. Let's take a look at the one on the front. Here I have a radius value of 10. Let me scroll in the list here. Here's the radius value of 10. And instead of using a value, you can choose to use a reference. And I can pick that particular datum point. And now the radius is being driven by that point. I'm going to undo this just to show you that. Oh, let me undo one other step as well. I'm undoing so I'm back to the dimensional value. Also, as you're dragging this out, if you hold down the shift key and then snap into the point, that is another way of changing this to be being driven by the reference. And next up, I want to add in a couple other different drag handles. Let me right click over one of the drag handles here and choose add radius. And again, I'm going to change my location reference. And this time for the location reference, I'm going to let it select a vertex from the edge over there. So that is another way of defining the location. You can use vertices of the tangent edges along there as well. And I don't know, let me see it value 25, how will that look? Yeah, maybe even go up a little more, bit more. There we go. And again, because of the interpolation, you can see how it is not relatively constant in between there. So we can add in another radius and then hold down the right mouse button and change the location reference. And I can let the vertex show up over there. And there's a value of 30. And again, because of the interpolation, it necks there in the middle. So in this way, we have the variable radius round created. In this particular case, I have seven different handles. When I'm happy, I can hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. And there is my variable radius round created in the part. If I decide later on that I don't want the variable radius round, all you have to do is select it and then use edit definition. You can see from the mini toolbar that the keyboard shortcut for edit definition is control E. And then if you go to the sets tab, here we have the radius table. You can right click over the radius table and choose make constant. Alternatively, if you move your mouse into the graphics area, you can hold down the right mouse button. This will bring up the menu as well as the mini toolbar. And this icon in the mini toolbar will make constant. Just like with make variable in previous versions, it'll just say make constant, just like in the pop-up menu that I got when I right-clicked over the radius table. And so when I choose make constant, it goes back to just a constant value. I can drag this out over here. Now let's make this a value of 12. Again, just to make it a little bigger so that you can see. And then hit the check mark in order to create that in the model. And then if I realize, oh wait, let me go back and use the undo button in order to get my variable radius round back in here. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.